malicious compliance. So reading some of these reminds me of my time in a plastic manufacturing plant and how I was told. I didn't understand business. We had bought a machine brand new for $750,000 US dollars and it was making us a fair amount of money. My bosses didn't want to do the regular maintenance on it though so as expected it began having issues. I was running the machine one night and noticed it began leaking either oil or hydraulic fluid. Can't remember which. I immediately told my boss we needed to shut it down because not only was the machine getting worse, but it was starting to spray fluid all over the parts. I was told no. This machine had to run or we would lose $500 an hour. I suggested placing the mold in another machine but I was told no. And further told I didn't understand business. Well as expected it had more problems which I reported but was told they might take the parts. Despite being covered in the fluid. And not to worry about the machine now spraying fluid like a bad horror film sprays blood. I asked if he was sure they wanted it to keep running they looked at me and firmly said yes. So I did. Eventually the grinding sounds hit and the machine shut down. They freaked out a moment trying to fix it but it was no good. They moved the mold into a different machine. Had to rerun all the parts. And remember that $500 an hour they lost for the machine being down? Well instead of being down 24 to 36 hours costing them about $18,000 the machine was down 3 weeks. Costing in production $252,000 plus another $45,000 for a new motor. Clearly losing almost $300,000 makes way more sense than $18,000. They're right I don't understand that kind of business. Luckily the business I work for is just the opposite. I've been a pro baker for 25 years. 18 with the same mom and pop place currently. If I go to my boss and tell her the oven doesn't sound right or the mixer sounds off. She will call out a tech for as soon as they can get there. I've never been wrong. It always ends up being a minor fix such as a gear starting to wear down or a grease nozzle being plugged. But left to keep getting worse it could end up being thousands of dollars in repairs. I couldn't imagine working somewhere where they don't take care of equipment. Yep. It's amazing what manglement can and will do to sour themselves in the foot. Once upon a time I had transitioned into product management. It was a good career path if I had been allowed to continue. But company reorganized internally after. Oh well. Anyways. I was learning how to do product pricing and how much we make for defense product and for commercial. Illuminating stuff and a nice break from writing software. So. This new knowledge in hand I see a presentation for the product going to a top 5 account for the company. Our biggest commercial customer. We were getting defense gross margins. Went to my manager product manager for that line and pointed it out saying we would lose the customer. His response. Senior management wouldn't allow bringing the price in line with expectations for commercial accounts. It had to make up for an old bad previous commercial deal we had with another customer that was from before my time in product management. For a product that was EOL shortly. Oh yeah and we didn't have a long term contract with top 5 customer. Some time after the SVP responsible for blocking the price reduction goes to visit said customer. Along with the account representative to finally negotiate the long term contract. The conversation went along these lines. Hey. So good to see you. Glad you could make it. By the by. We designed you out. Bye bye. Top 5 customer. Mal. You told me those entry couplings would hold for another week. Quote. Kaylee. That was 6 months ago. Cap'n. Oh and I chatted with some of my former co-workers and learned these kind of decisions would help them lose several lucrative contracts and are barely holding on last I heard. I got out in time in my opinion. 
And this is exactly what is wrong with most management and especially how business is managed in the United States. Not that it doesn't work this way worldwide, but we seem to be especially talented at it. Always obsessed with short-term returns instead of long-term stability and profitability. Maybe you didn't know business, but it's painfully obvious that the boss didn't know anything about the importance of lubrication in a high-pressure mechanical device. Dang! Don't listen to the guy who runs the machine what does he know about how it should work. Sure, I don't have an MBA, but I can definitely see when someone's making a bad decision. I work in a shop where several machines are around $300,000 and have always had to push back on management regarding machine maintenance. I refused to back down for exactly this reason. When I transferred departments, the machines I used to care for in my old department kept breaking more than they ever had because my successors didn't have the same confidence in pushing back when management made no sense and insisted on machines running all hours with minimal care. Who in their right mind buys a Ferrari and refuses to get the oil changed? If you don't schedule maintenance, the machine will schedule it for you. There's a saying, penny wise, pound foolish. Be super careful about high pressure oil. It requires immediate medical intervention. Gangrene. Then you start losing body parts fast. Imagine buying a $750,000 machine and not looking after it. As they say, schedule your maintenance or your equipment will schedule it for you. Man shrugging. I work in a similar situation. The people in my department have simply started explaining management's poor decisions by saying, stepping over a dollar to save a nickel. In the 1980s I started teaching at a US high school that boasted they had a planetarium. It would have done a small college proud. The initial cost of installing the planetarium was covered by some kind of donation. If I ever knew the details, I've forgotten them. But I do remember that for some reason the administration or school board balked at the manufacturer's maintenance agreement for the equipment. After a decade or so, it began having problems a few years later. The Southern Hemisphere stars were all dark. By that time the high school science teachers stopped using the planetarium. An elementary teacher was asked to teach three-week classes for elementary students. Eventually, the entire thing went dark. By this time the classes were viewing slide presentations projected up on the planetarium dome. These elementary classes continued for a few years more until the teacher retired. I think the administration didn't want to admit the planetarium wasn't usable and it was easier to leave her in her position than to move her back to teaching third grade. Fast forward another 10 years or so, and an astronomy club consisting mainly of a group of electrical engineers from a local factory, name withheld, asked to use the planetarium. School administration had to admit the actual situation. The engineers volunteered to repair the equipment. Admin was excited and asked us teachers, HS science teachers, to be ready to include the planetarium in our curriculum the following year. The engineers tear down the equipment. Over the next few weeks more and more parts are removed from the equipment. Then everything stops. We teachers learn that the engineers had admitted defeat. The planetarium sits empty for a couple of years, with boxes of random parts sitting around, panels left open, wires hanging out. Eventually a group of parents who had graduated from our school started asking why their kids weren't getting taught in the planetarium. The school board contacted the manufacturer about the planetarium but balked at the estimate. They found an independent contractor who came in and offered to do the repair for a lot less. A few months later, and several thousands of dollars later, 
More panels are standing open and a few more boxes are on the floor. The contractor has given up and gone home. Next, the school board authorized school administration to have the manufacturer do the repairs. More time passes. And finally the boxes are gone and the panels all closed. But the planetarium isn't usable. It turns out that it would have been cheaper to buy all new equipment than to try to have the planetarium repaired. More time passes while health classes are taught in the room. Eventually, the room is made part of a building project and remodeled into a regular classroom that is just a little bit longer than most. I asked if he was sure they wanted it to keep running they looked at me and firmly said yes. So I did. This sounds almost like he was also maliciously complying with orders from above. This is something a lot of people don't understand. When you buy or build something, you are also committing to the costs of maintaining it. Whether it is machinery, clothing, vehicles, roads, computers. They never learn the ID10Ts. For one of a nail by Anon for one of a nail the shoe was lost for one of a shoe the horse was. Lost for one of a horse the rider was lost for one of a rider the battle was lost for one of. A battle the kingdom was lost and all for the want of a horseshoe nail. You were making a rational decision. Business owners who started up their own businesses hate those. They were lucky and succeeded through risk-taking and despise those who think things through. I have to respect the military. They build maintenance into every job. When I was in the Navy, if anything looked like it could go wrong, they shut down everything to deal with it. And preventative maintenance was practically a religion. Daily maintenance. Weekly maintenance. Monthly maintenance. Board? Find something to clean and oil. I work tech support for laboratory equipment. The first thing I always ask. When was the last time you did the maintenance? More often than not the answer I get is, what maintenance? Quote. I wish I was kidding. By the way, doing the maintenance solves 95% of the issues. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our playlists full of similar content. Epic Aircast is like doom scrolling for your ears. Please like, share, and subscribe.